Hello and welcome to Upside Down. In today's tutorial we are going to create a teleport and a jumping ramp that later on I'm going to use into the Quake 3 remaster project. I want to show you how you can create those elements by just using blueprints. Let's start. I already have a scene and I put the teleport and also a ramp that we are going to use just so that we indicate where exactly those gameplay elements are going to be placed. And first thing that we are going to create is to create a blueprint actor. So somewhere in your content browser, I'm just going to right click, go to blueprint class and choose actor. The first one we are going to do is going to be a teleport. So I will name this BP underscore teleport and we are going to open it. First thing that we are going to create are two boxes which we are going to use one for the location from where you teleport and the second one is going to be the location where you are going to teleport the character once they entered the first one. Let's add those components. So I'll click on add components and here we are going to choose box collision. First one we are going to name it teleporter and the second one I'm going to name it location. Let's make sure that our location is not in the area here of the teleporter, but instead it's in our default scene root. So I'm just going to drag it and after that click attach. Okay. I will move the location box just a little bit on the side so that we can see that both are here on the scene. And now we can already start making our blueprint. I'll go to the event graph. Here we can delete everything. And first, I'm going to create an event for our teleporter. So I'm going to grab this one, right click, and then add event to teleporter on collision and then on begin overlap. First thing that we want to create is a branch which will be checking the condition if our character is really overlapping with the teleporter box. I'm going to drag and type branch. And from the branch, if the branch is true and our character is overlapping, we are going to type teleport. And here we need to set up a little bit some more details about what we are teleporting and where we are teleporting it. So here comes the second box. We take the location. Then I'm going to drag from it and type get world location. And this is going to be our location where we are teleporting the character. Now it's time to check if our player is really overlapping with the teleporter. So I'm going to right click and type get player character. And now we are going to check is overlapping actor. So I'm going to drag from that one and type is overlapping actor. Into other we are going to check if it's overlapping with our teleporter and our return value is going to go into our condition. So if it's overlapping, then it's going to be true. If no, no one is going to be teleported. Now that we have our condition, there is only one other thing that we need to add. And this is to say what exactly we are teleporting. So we are again going to get the player character and I'm going to connect it to the target for the teleportation. We are going to save it. And now we are ready to place it inside our world. I'm going to drag and drop the blueprint in my scene. And now we can adjust it so that it's in the correct place. So we have our initial box for the teleporter here. Now we can go into details. And here we can see that you have both the teleporter and the location. So for example, I can select the location and move it wherever we want. Let's move it somewhere back. Let's move it here. Let's save and test it out. If I come to the teleporter, whoop, you can see that I teleported to the location where we put our marker. Okay, now let's create the jump pad. Again, we are right clicking, create new blueprint class, actor. And here I'm going to name it jump but just gonna put BP in front. Here we are starting again with the same thing. We need to create a volume in which when the character enters are going to be ejected into the air. So I'm going to add a new component. And again, we are going for box collision. And now we are going into the event graph. 
I will again delete everything. And here we are first thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna select our box, right click, add event, collision, and on begin overlap. First, uh, we need to actually get some information from our character pawn. And after that, we are just going to multiply it so that we increase the amount of velocity in a certain direction. What I'm gonna do is I'll drag and we are going to cast two first person character in my case. If you have your custom project, you need to use the character. You need to cast to the character that you're using in your project. So here from other actor, we need to connect it to object. And I'm going to drag a line and we are going to, and we are going to type plunge character. And now we need to take some information. First, connect this to the target because we are going to be launching the, the character. And now let's drag and type character movement. From character movement, we are taking jump Z velocity so that we multiply this. And then we are going to type float and we will use float multiply by float. And on the second parameter, let's multiply it three times. So now you can see that here we have a float and here we have a vector. We need to break the vector. We need to right click and then split structure pin. So now you can see that we have both X, Y and Z and we can say in which direction exactly we want to launch our character. So in our case, let's launch it towards Z. And here we need to click overwrite Z. Now we are ready to compile, save, and let's test it out. I'll drag our pad. In our case, you can see that the size of uh, our trigger is a little bit too small. So this should not be worrying you because we can easily scale it save and let's hit play now let's test it if i come here up you can see that it launched our character into the air so of course here we can play a lot with all the different values exactly where we want to launch our character and we can tweak it in whatever situation we want to have for our levels Thank you for joining me in today's tutorial. I hope that this is helpful and useful. Leave a comment down below and see you next time.